So remember the symbol nth root of a refers to the principal nth root of a. If it exists, this number will either be non-negative if n is even, or the same sign as a if n is odd. It's easy to determine whether a number is positive or negative. But if the radicand is a variable expression, we must be more careful and use the absolute value. Remember the symbol absolute value of a indicates a non-negative number whose magnitude is the same as a. So for example, let's say we want to simplify the square root of a squared. Since a squared is a squared, then a is a square root of a squared, and we might write square root of a squared equals a. But we would be wrong. In order for this to be the square root of a squared using our radical symbol, it must also be non-negative. Because remember, the square root of n using our symbol is the non-negative number whose square is n. And we don't know whether a is positive or negative. So to guarantee we actually have a non-negative number, we'll use the absolute value. It's important to understand that we're not using the absolute value because we have a root. We're using the absolute value because for square roots we have to have a non-negative number. So if I want to simplify the cube root of x cubed, since x cubed is x cubed, then x is a cube root of x cubed. And we can write the cube root of x cubed is equal to x. Do we need absolute value here? Well, remember, if x is a real number, then x cubed will have the same sign as x. And since we're dealing with the principal cube root, we need to have the principal cube root have the same sign as what we started with. And so x and x cubed have the same sign, and we don't need to do anything. In fact, we can go a little bit further. Since absolute value of x is always non-negative, but might have a different sign from x to the n, it is not generally correct to write nth root of x to the n is the absolute value of x. Instead, we must consider whether the root must be positive. If n is even, then the nth root of a must be non-negative, so the nth root of x to the n is the absolute value of x. But if n is odd, then the nth root of a must have the same sign as a, so the nth root of x to the n will just be x with no absolute value. In other words, you have to use the absolute value for even index roots, and you can't use the absolute value for odd index roots. For example, let's try to simplify square root 50 y to power 6. We can begin by factoring by perfect squares. So remember that as long as a and b are non-negative, the square root of a, b is the square root of a times the square root of b. It's also useful to remember that c squared is non-negative for any real number c. So y squared, y squared, and y squared are all positive, and so we can break apart this square root into a product of the individual factors. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of y squared is the absolute value of y. Square root of 2 is just square root of 2. And we can combine these three absolute values of y into a single absolute value of y to the third. We can find the fourth root of x to the tenth, y to the sixth. And we can simplify by factoring out perfect fourth powers. We can break up our radical into a product of radicals. 
the fourth root of a fourth power is x, or y. But since our index is even, we have to use the absolute value. And we'll rewrite this as absolute value of x squared y times the leftovers. Or we could take the cube root of 8x to the fifth. We can remove perfect cube factors. We can break our radical into a product of radicals. The cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of x cubed is x. And remember, if the index of the root is odd, don't use absolute value. And finally, we have the leftover bit cube root of x squared. How about a quotient? So it's useful to remember, for a and b non-negative, the square root of a over b is the square root of a over the square root of b. And so that means we can split the square root of 50y to the fifth over 18x to the third as the square root of 50y to the fifth over the square root of 18x to the third. Now, if you listen carefully to what I just said, you'll realize there's a bit of a problem. We don't actually know whether 50y to the fifth or 18x to the third are positive, so we might not be able to do this. And if you're concerned about this, you should be. But we'll see how we can resolve this once we get to the end of the problem. We'll simplify the numerator. We'll factor the radicand by perfect squares. The square roots of 25 y squared and y squared are going to be 5, the absolute value of y, and the absolute value of y. And we have our leftover square root of 2y. The absolute value of y, absolute value of y can be multiplied to be the absolute value of y squared. And remember, c squared is non-negative for any real number, so we don't really need the absolute value in this case. Meanwhile, we can also simplify the denominator. So we'll factor 18x to the third by perfect squares. This breaks up as a square root of 9, square root of x squared, square root of 2x, and we can simplify. And we get our denominator. And here's an important idea. We should answer questions in the same language they were asked. In this case, the original question was the square root of a quotient. But as written, the answer is a quotient of square roots. So what we should do is to recombine this quotient of square roots and rewrite it as a square root of a quotient. And here's the important idea. Remember that we had some concerns about being able to split our square root of a quotient into a quotient of square roots because we didn't know if the radicand was positive or negative. But if the original expression has any meaning, then the original radicand has to be non-negative, which means that x and y have to have the same sign. Now it's possible that they're both negative, but in the final simplified form, as long as they have the same sign, the radicand will still be non-negative. 